Welcome back to America Right Now. I'm Tom Basili. Last week, two Hamilton Township, New Jersey police officers responded to a domestic violence call. Within seconds, one officer was fighting for his life. Another just barely missed being killed. The assailant was killed, the result of a quick action on the part of the partner of the wounded officer. Both cops fortunately will survive the incident, but neither will likely ever be the same. Physical scars and emotional challenges will forever shape their futures. Hamilton is about an hour south of New York City, 35 miles east of Philadelphia. In the early 2000s, it was ranked as high as the 15th safest town in America. The location of the incident underscores that a police-involved shooting or a domestic violence incident can happen anywhere at any time. The incident also highlights the ongoing war on cops by Democrat officials across the country, even at a time when Americans are on edge over violent crime. We need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. I support a radical reimagining of community safety and public safety. Many affluent suburb, suburbs have essentially already begun pursuing a defunding of the police. So suck it up and defunding the police has to happen. Why in this nation do too many black Americans wake up knowing that they could lose their life in the course of just living their life? Of course, that's a lie. Last November, Gallup reported that the number of Americans who feared becoming victims of crime rose to its highest level in more than 30 years. More than 40 percent of us are afraid to walk alone near our homes now. Despite the rhetoric by the Biden White House that crime is down, homicides and other violent crimes are still higher than they were pre-pandemic during the Trump administration. Violent crime has also been punctuated by high-profile incidents perpetrated by illegal immigrants who have flooded the country without vetting during the Biden presidency. Democrats who declared all-out war against cops following the killing of career criminal and drug addict George Floyd have cooled their approach. Black Lives Matter, which provided financial support to Democrat candidates, is no longer marching and calling for the defunding of the police. Democrat officials, driven by their selfish political interests, not public safety, have begged off the mantra as well. Soros-funded district attorneys are falling in elections or to corruption scandals. Antifa has also been quiet lately, not targeting the homes of cops, as they did during riots that they fomented in cities across America in 2020. Even the crowd who wanted to replace cops with social workers have largely realized the other stupidity of that idea. Domestic violence calls, after all, like the one in Hamilton, are among the most dangerous for police officers with the data showing that they have a high risk of injury or death to both victims and law enforcement. Don't be fooled, however. It may be a cold war, often less obvious to the casual observer, but it is ongoing. It is nonetheless still devastating to policing and public safety in America. For example, in the wake of the Hamilton shooting last week, the Attorney General of New Jersey, Matthew J. Platkin, 37, an appointee of Democrat Governor Phil Murphy, issued a politically calculated statement to tell the press that the incident was under investigation. After announcing the investigation, Mr. Platkin, whose appointment raised eyebrows for his lack of relevant experience, dedicated more than 75 percent of his lengthy press statement to spout off Democrat talking points about gun control. The presence of firearms escalates domestic incidents with access to a firearm increasing the likelihood of a homicide by a thousand percent, he said in part. In New Jersey, we are working together to disrupt cycles of violence, end gun violence, protect law enforcement and support victims and survivors of violence as they work to rebuild their lives. Now, look, folks. Maybe smart policy to initiate an internal investigation when police use force that results in a suspect's death. What isn't smart is releasing a statement to the media announcing that such an investigation is underway while a cop is fighting for his life and another is dealing with the trauma of the incident. New Jersey is also one of a handful of Democrat controlled states that automatically launches a grand jury investigation into the police officer's conduct in cases like these. Policies like that and public statements like Platkin's are unnecessary and they are irresponsible. They suggest to the public that the cops did something wrong. 
It's a coy continuation of the fabricated hands up, don't shoot narrative of the left and the notion that our police are guilty before proven innocent. It makes them appear to be the criminals instead of the guy with the long gun who shot at them. New Jersey has also made it a policy to release all charges of misconduct against police officers, regardless of the outcome of the investigation or disciplinary action taken. Law enforcement in this country is facing a national recruiting crisis that is impacting the operational efficacy of departments across the nation because of policies and practices like this. Officers are still retiring in droves and suffering emotionally from being maligned and abandoned by Democrat politicians. Author David Perez, a former cop who has written extensively about the impact this continuing assault has had on individual officers and public safety, sums it up well. He says an us versus them mentality has been created that, quote, puts law enforcement in the crosshairs between the mob and the politicians in the battle for power and influence. Of course, the cops and public safety continue to lose in this paradigm. So make no mistake, folks, Democrats might be trying to pull back from their anti-cop narratives, but behind the scenes, they continue to struggle to back the one team that stands between security and chaos.